Robert, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. Congratulations for the release of your first solo album, Better Way. Um, how are you feeling? How are you doing in Braga right now? Well, I'm uh, I'm feeling really good. I'm I'm spending this week here in uh, Generation, and um, and it's been really fun. It's the first time I'm kind of trying to put some things together for a solo show, so it's a it's a very new feeling. And then, of course, with the lockdown and so on, uh, everything changed all the time. But I managed to get the, at least some days this week to set my stuff up and be in this beautiful black box of, of this place called Generation. And um, yeah, it's been fun. I, I, would, I could do much more of that. Good way to spend the lockdown, I think. <laughs> Good. Um, so you're going to present the show, if I'm not mistaken, on, the, on Friday? Uh, yeah, we, uh, that won't happen. Uh, that won't happen, not with the new no, uh, yesterday. Yeah, friendship yeah. And the new lockdown. Yeah, it's not going to happen. I, I, I think... <laughs> I think most of Europe and the world, at least of north of the north of the of the planet, will be closed down. That's my prediction until it's Easter or March, April, or something like that. So instead, we we postponed the show um, till uh, May 29th. Okay. and um, and then yesterday we recorded uh, a little video. Where, where, I, where I'm playing some songs and we try to make it like a little show for, for camera instead. So, good, good. you know, got to be creative with everything here. Yeah, we have to adapt uh, at the moment. With yeah, 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 yeah. We all knew that it was coming again. Yeah. Uh, it just hit us again. So this it's, performance, it's the to... record, is going to go live on Canal 180 on Friday. That's it. We're on Friday go. evening. So, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And also yesterday, it was your showcase at the Eurosonic too. It was a really good show. It has to be short because of the of the time. That is the yeah. kind of festival, but yeah. So an intimate show that really suits the the new album better way. Cool. Nice to hear that. Um, I, I was very excited to try and see what how that would feel to share it with you. All. It's recorded in in one really nice studio in Brussels uh, last month. And um, and I, I set it up with some friends there. So we had a lot of fun with it. So it's nice to see how it's coming out. To finally to come out. It was, uh, it was yeah. this, only this song, so do you record a longer version that maybe we will see on YouTube or? No, just did this one uh, session because it was a sort of invitation from, from, um, your sonic and then they wanted to make this edition this year and they had some quite specific requirements for what they needed and so i thought i thought i'd just kind of play the show or make the show for them because i couldn't join the rest of the the danish artists that were all doing their thing it, it's a logistical nightmare to make something like what they did up there with the recording oh, all these yeah, sessions yeah. with a hundred bands and and try to build their homepage and stuff like that that works but i think they did a quite nice nice job um I, I just went in there and watched some other shows yesterday as well myself and uh it's kind of a nice way to watch a little show if you, you get to see a lot of different artists and you can you know, you get a little taste of what it could be like. And for me, I mean, doing a show like that is actually quite perfect right now because to make a whole concert feels quite a lot at the moment, being just me and myself uh, or trying to figure out, uh, yeah, do I want musicians? Do I want some visuals? And this is all something that I'm spending, for example, time here in Braga, also figuring out what, like, what is, what, what am I doing with the show and what do I want to build? Uh, for a longer show, so this your Sonic show was was quite a nice way for me to present it, uh, and, and suits me quite well with this kind of fifteen minutes uh, length. Maybe slowly I can work my way my way uh, longer, and once yeah. the once the lock, lockdown is uh, is is coming up again, then then I will be ready. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Um, for this performance and this residency in the Generation in Braga. Uh, what was the purpose of your of your work there? Do you, are, do you have experimented with new technologies, new ways to present music, or what had you been working on? Well, mainly I've been sort of figuring out like um, 
<laughs> what's what's my show gonna include like uh because i have you know i have the songs of the album like you're seeing them also how i performed them at your sonic and i kind of like the show to be more of a performance rather than a kind of concert so i'm very inspired by someone like laurie anderson and and people that work with it i with maybe multimedia maybe even using visuals but even having conversations with visuals that when i filmed yesterday i was running around braga filming water fountains yeah and stuff like this and trying to kind of include them with a new song also using some field recordings that i was recording some spoken words and so my you know in my dream uh it's like this kind of concerts slash shows less talk show slash less a special uh -huh. yeah like where i'd like to invite people maybe it's like a theater thing like mm. like it's set up with nice lights and it's set up with some kind of you know and um and I, and i'm also into enjoying playing like in the show in your sonic i invited two friends that came and uh, was very kind of tucked away but but they were there with their instruments uh, and i also like this idea of playing with but i have to you know i have to balance uh, the things you know i'm 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 just sort of like trying out uh, one how to play the songs that i had on the album and then two how to realize them live yeah well do you have like certainly have to experiment a new way to bring these songs to life yeah. now you are gonna get in yeah. lockdown i don't know if you are in a happy way happy because we are gonna go in lockdown again and this kind of yeah. have to go on the road again touring yeah. you're you're happy yeah. about that that you don't have to tour and you can like try to promote your music more in the comfort of the same space Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm split. You know, I have two different feelings inside me. I I, I love playing live. So, I, and we, with my band Efterklang, we we were touring all the way till the first lockdown happened in the beginning of March. And so we we were very lucky to be able to complete this European tour. Only had to cancel one show in Milano, mm. and. Um, And then we went back, you know, and we didn't know at the time if it would be like someone was saying, you know, June, July, and maybe Summer August. Summer was the hope. We would be fine, you know. <laughs> and here we are a year later. And uh, and there's another wave and it seems like the numbers are just crawling up and up and up. And as I see it, um, you know, every country is trying to most of all secure their hospital system that it doesn't break down with too many Corona patients and other patients from a lot of things, people with other diseases and cancer and so on. So it's a really strange kind of collective challenge for us to, to do this together. Uh, and, uh, and while there's a vaccine being projected and shoot it out all over the world at the moment so it's it's uh it's just a weird time but i i and and i think we are all in the same boat so i also i'm i'm also in that boat and i mean uh, i'm I, i use my time like i was saying suits me to be here in braga and generation i think it's a good time for me to just work i'm also in the capricorn season i'm a capricorn myself i'm like uh let's just Let's just work our way through this. And this is Sagittarius, so we are in the same okay. team. Got you. Let's get the things yes. done and then. <laughs> That's it. So, so, yeah, so it's easy in a way. It's also like that. I'm, I don't, I, 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 eventually or occasionally I get, I get the existential on it, but I, but at the moment I feel quite sort of strong in the sense that, mm. uh, that I, I feel this is the time to complete, um, you know, get, get, get through with my show uh, and really develop that, but also completing an Efterklang record that's been on. So, so there's loads of my plate. I have, I have a lot of places to escape, to escape this bigger, this bigger situation. Yeah. Good, good. So let's <laughs> start more or less from the beginning. When did yeah. you start to work on, on this record on Better Way? It was 
once the lockdown, the first lockdown happened, while you were touring with your band, After Clan, um, mm-hmm. 2019, 2020, when did it start? Well, it's this album started in 2017. Mm-hmm. And um, it started with me moving to Lisbon. It started with me getting a really cool studio uh, from a friend of a friend on the other side of the river and got offered this little room with a beautiful view. It's also in the cover of the album. And, uh, and it's, it, 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 you know, I've, it, it sort of allowed me to, to frame the work of my own because I've been working on music for, for like many years, like 10, 15 years. I started my band after Klang with the other guys around. 20 years ago so it's it's been a long journey but i never really made a solo album and it's something that i've been thinking it could be a nice challenge to see what would happen if i would make music with just myself to you know gotta have fun with something so i i thought like moving to lisbon was a good occasion to start that and then i just basically started going to the studio and writing my songs slowly uh, one by one and and uh, and and getting to know myself and it was a different experience for me because it's it, it i mean it took long like three years for me to collect all the music even playing a few shows test shows here and there uh, but it took me a while to sort of get used to it and you know also get used to my own judgment judgmental voice constantly on the shoulder and trying to trying to kind of be good to myself and and navigate my sufferings was really interesting. So yeah, it's been a long way coming. And then when this whole lockdown came in, um, I mean, I, I was already kind of towards the end of the process. So, but I also have been putting out records with Efterklang and so on. So I wasn't really like stressing me on it, but I had the fortune to be able to sort of use this whole last year to prepare uh, the the the, the the release to find the label to make the artwork the videos and so on so it's all been like kind of something i've been brewing on found also the title and stuff in the last year so but the music is kind of written over three years okay good good so for this record you say that you wanted to work on your solo music here when you move up to lisbon then we will talk about if you want about what the, what were the reasons to make you move here to to Lisbon because I think it's a city mm-hmm. that usually for musicians but also for other people is a city mm-hmm. that helps them reconnect with themselves. I don't know is something about the lifestyle here or it's just mm-hmm. the city itself that is really creative and really help people to connect with themselves. But uh, did you work solo on this record because I think you. You have the help of Pete Kember, for example, to help you with the with the record. So, tell me what until what degree you were doing your work at solo, but you also need the help of people, external help to to materialize your ideas. Yeah, I've, I, I I involved a few people, friends of mine. I also had a Swedish friend playing drums and a Finnish friend playing drums and. Uh, Portuguese, a couple of Portuguese musicians playing a few things here and there. Uh, so I, I wasn't sort of totally saying no, no, no collaboration whatsoever. And um, and for the mixing where I was working with Sonic Boom or Peter Kemper, uh, that was, of course, kind of a crucial one because a lot of things can happen in that uh, place with mix and and the way you mix it together. and. Also, because Peter is not necessarily like a mixing engineer, like he he is also a mixing engineer, but he is much more of a producer or a sort of scenographer or something like that. He's like a he's 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 got sort of a really cool um, ear mind. I'd like to call it like a way of listening to music and a way of creating ideas. Trying to okay. yeah, exactly soothing suiting the thing so so i i came with songs you know that i had recorded mainly on my own and 
and I and I and I needed uh I felt I needed someone to to help me lift that uh away from the situation I was in so sort of get a little bit perspective and so so it happened that I I just really loved what Peter is doing and and I was sort of like you know he had a band called Spaceman 3 and and they had a lot of lovely music and one of my favorite songs of theirs is called Big City and I used that also as a little bit of an inspiration to to the album uh, and so I just thought like why do I not I, I like what this what this guy is doing. He's also produced the last Beats House album and was working with Panda Bear and a few things. And I always loved whatever he was involved with. So for me, this was like a great sort of triggering point. Uh, it wasn't because I knew him or because I whatever. I just kind of liked what he was working on. And so I wrote him an email and said, hey, uh, do you feel like working on some of my stuff? And uh, luckily he was into that. Okay, so you became a, a good partnership between the two. Yeah, I think it's a good partnership. He's a he's a he's a Scorpio, so he's a different different spice. But I have a, I have a I have a little bit of that too. He's a he's a he's a he's a cool cat, like much cooler than me. But uh, <laughs> but I I think we fit quite well because we have similar interest in in how we uh want to project ourselves in some way and he's just got so much experience and it was just so lovely sitting next to him learning i learned a lot from just watching him using pro tools and you know doing shit mm -hmm. and 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 so that was really cool good good um well we talked um, before about the cover of the of the album of better way it was created by fatima moreno which you met in barcelona 10 years ago or so why do you decide to choose her and what is the representation of the imagery of the of the record so well fatima is we we by chance just ended up living in lisbon both of us and she's um she's from andalusia and we met in barcelona as you were saying and I've seen her kind of growing because I but first when I met her, she was more of a graphic designer kind of. And and then she so sort of over the past like many years, she's been she's been painting and drawing much more. And you should all check her out on, on her Instagram profile. Maybe you can make a link to her or something like that. But she's yeah, she's very she's got tons of different uh faces. She 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 I'd say she's mainly uh painting like animals and monsters and weird non-existing creatures <laughs> sea creatures uh psychedelic scenarios and uh but not so much portraits but the thing was when we talked about this album and i really loved this touch she has of like watercolors and so on and she was in spain at the time <laughs> And, uh, and so, so, so she's, you know, she just picked up the watercolors and then we were talking about what is something that kind of brings this album together, because I think musically the album has quite a lot of different phases to it. It's got some pretty, rah, and then some heart broken. Ooh. And it's like, I wanted an album to be very kaleidoscopic and hmm. going in many different directions. And I thought with the cover it could be nice to have something that just you know kind of unites all these things and so the idea of this portrait came up and also the idea of not necessarily a portrait in like a st standard way where you have to see it's me it's not so important it was just the idea to have this idea of my face but like smeared out and full of different worlds uh which is kind of cool when you have the the vinyl or something, you can see it very close and there's a lot of the small details that are really cool on there. So, so that, that, yeah, that ended up like that. Good. good. Now, and it's what you said, the record is quite kaleidoscopic in a way that it starts so strong and ended up with ocean waves that is so calm. Mm. And I have to mm. confess that the first time I listened to the record was in a beach here in Cascais. Oh, okay. Like sweet. Perfect setup for the whole mood of the album. Great, it's like great. it's so diverse in a way yeah. you have a connection between all the songs but it's so diverse 
that in this case, what you say, usually right now, music tend to be on a single note because if they find out that one artist work doing like music that is more sad, everything have to have the same tone. Yeah. No, yeah. it's not like that. It's, there is more representation, more diverse type of music that can also connect with that one single mm. message. So I think it's what I'm happy. I'm happy to hear. I'm happy to hear that it translates like that. It's, it's, it's good. Yeah. You never really know in these times, but, but at the moment I, I'm, I feel like, like records that, that, that goes, that feels like going in a little bit different directions and not being afraid of things being a bit contrasty can be nice. So that's um, like my hope that it, but it's nice to hear a cool place to listen to it on the beach. I think that's, that should be an inspiration. <laughs> you, you ended up living with a sense of happiness and relief in a certain way that cool. after listening to the record, which is quite good, quite good. Honestly. Awesome. And let's talk about your life here in Lisbon. And mm -hmm. you collaborate with Rodrigo Leao, if I'm not mistaken, with the song The Boy Inside mm -hmm. uh, on his la latest work. So first I want to ask you about that collaboration, how it ended up happening. Mm -hmm. And if you have the opportunity or you have some local artists, some Portuguese artists on your watch for future collaborations. Um, yeah. Uh, Rodrigo started with... Um... Uh, we have a mutual friend, uh, Federico, who's uh, an Italian piano player and a composer. And he was saying, uh, he was working on the Rodrigo's album and they were searching for someone to sing a little bit on the album. And they were, they were talking about my voice. So they, they started um, reaching out to me and just said, we have a song. And do you feel like, you know, I didn't know Rodrigo. I knew his band. His old band, a bit, but uh, from Lisbon story or something like that. Very uh, simple kind of. And but I, I've, I then found out that of course he had made a lot of things and he 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 uh, also collaborated with nice singers like Beth Gibbons of Portishead and, and Stuart Stables from Tindersticks. And he has long career and has made a lot of music. So I, and I really liked what I was hearing. So I thought like why not we tried it out? And then I was just singing on top of that and we. Ended up spending quite a nice time, like a year ago, kind of. And um, such a friendly man, Rodrigo, and very warm and oh, and inviting. So, yeah, it just happened like that. Uh, I, I uh, yeah, I always look for for. I'm always curious. I don't have any like specific. Uh, I, I'm 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 half working with a with a with a. I mean, don't know if you can call it work. I just kind of pleasure for me, <laughs> but uh, with a with a with a with a Portuguese band called La Bachoe, which is like a, a, a duo, um, a guitar and and and, and this incredible uh, voice, and and they're they're like a couple. So I'm I'm like a couples therapist slash uh, uh, producer in, in this constellation. <laughs> no, I, I uh, they just asked if I wanted to listen to some songs and 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 come up with some opinion. And this is something I really like, the um, kind of, um, if not producing, but mediating some kind of music and being part of a process with someone else doing some music and I can share my opinion on it. So. So this is one project, and then I I, I really like all these Prince Disco's uh, releases, like the the more dancey, clubby part of of uh, of Lisbon, and has very specific sound and so on. And there's loads. Would also be nice to work with some, if at some point I don't know if I ever will come through, but uh, find some kind of fire guitar uh, player. Yeah, there's loads. There's a lot. There's so many nice people to work with and do projects with. Um, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. No, it's, it's true. It can happen organically any moment because Lisbon is such a rich city when it came to music and musicians. Yeah. Especially and it moves quite fast. Uh, yeah. It moves fast too. You know, it's it's it, when you have an idea. I think the Portuguese mentality is is quite. Uh, fast moving and I, I like that it's, it's uh, just quite moving you, and collaborative 
yeah, exactly. People like to meet and do stuff and help each other. So, so it's it's a uh, it's nice. You can always find someone to play with. It's true. It's true. So mm. now, what what are your plans? If we can call it like that in this in these moments, when yeah, what is going to happen to the yeah? Uh, yeah, my plans are kind of short sighted mainly, and then I'm trying to plan around this year. Sonic's uh, says you know, so like trying to find a like a live agent, a booker for my solo show, and mm -hmm. and figuring that out, which is which has some you know longer perspectives, like figuring out how much I want to tour if I want to play concert and so on. So, so that's one kind of planning. And then, then I just, right now I'm, I'm going back from here, uh, tonight or tomorrow to Lisbon, depending on the lockdown situation. And, and then I'll go to, I'll, I'll, I'll go to Denmark to finish up, uh, album with Efterklang. And then I, I, I imagine February will be a bit like, like that. It, it will be, mainly there in Denmark. So, okay, so you're working then, on, uh, on the next record for this year? Yeah, or you're gonna yeah, yeah. It, like, slowly. We, we are aiming to get it out this year, but um, yeah, we'll see. There'll be probably be news during this spring or summer or something like that. So. Okay, good. But we, we, we are like, like in the phase where we are boiling everything down to an album. So, so this will be like the next couple of months for me just getting into the finalizing of that album. So yeah, no, no time, no time. time for rest. Okay. <laughs> uh, 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 I should have a bit of rest. I've friend sent me an, a really good clinic in, in, uh, Lisbon, uh, osteopoth, like, uh, someone to get into the body. I Fix think I should, <laughs> I should go do that. Yeah, I, th I think I need that. <laughs> well, we all need that. <laughs> we all, we all need that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, more so, massages to people out there yeah so for example like to end up the the conversation mm. one moment for the whole record of better way that that really symbolized the essence of the of the album it can be like when you were recording it in almada if i'm not mistaken mm. one moment mm did you realize that this album is going to sound this way or I want to, what I want to represent with this, with this record? Well, I think a, a song like Ocean Wave is a nice song to, to grasp onto. And when I was making that song, it just fits the scenario of that studio in El Mala so well. You have the boats passing by the window and the flow of the water and the kind of speed of, of that kind of, uh, baseline and the way it moves and so on it just kind of fits really well so I, I i do remember really more than one but a couple of really nice sunsets where you where i would be working on that song and and so it's yeah Good. that made sense yeah <laughs> perfect so to end it up the interview just three quick questions the first one mm. is one album that you could listen for the rest of your life, one that it really changed you? The rest of my life. Oh, wow. Uh, I always get some crazy thoughts, like how I would go mad listening to the same one again and again. <laughs> uh, wow. Uh, it does a few. I mean, um, You can create your own compilation of artists into one album. If you... Yeah, I think it would have to be a really long, but and there would have to be really long silences in between, so uh, so you don't go totally nuts. I mean, I always love like uh, that Mark Holly's album. I'm listening a lot to this Japanese artist at the moment with an album called Wetlands, which could also be really cool to um, to include, but what his name is some kind of ambient artist from tokyo mm. uh, his name is hiroshi yoshimura and the album is called wetland that could also be one that could be going pretty could get me pretty far i also like gigi masang it's an italian piano it's like at most if i'm thinking of a record i need to listen to for the rest of my life it needs to have some 
giant space in there <laughs> for other things to happen, you know. Imagine you would be hearing like a yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Good. Yeah. Okay, second one, one dream collaboration. Uh one dream collaboration. I would love to work with someone like Brian Eno. I would love to work with Laurie Anderson. Wow. That would be like an awesome dream. Okay, good. That was fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the last one, just to finish up. We're usually doing in all the interviews, just in case something something that we missed to talk about. Yeah. Something that you would like to tell people about yourself, your music, or something that works you in a way. Something that is me. Uh, uh, I just call it my hair. It's red. No. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed. And I... Uh, I occasionally wear rings. It doesn't, they don't stick. To, I don't have them on all the time, but I have them on from time to time when I'm feeding it. And it doesn't leave the mark on the finger too. It uh, doesn't. This one is quite big. It's, um, and that I do change it up once in a while. I also just had my first, uh, uh teeth operation, <laughs> tooth operation. Good. That's something. <laughs> There's something that we miss out to talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. So, cool. Thank you so much, Casper, for thank, this time, thank you for thank you for talking about the album, your life, and everything. And I hope everything goes well with this new lockdown. Good luck yes. with the new record of Afterclam and everything. Thank you. And thank you so much. See you. Thank you so much. Good to talk to you, Anisio. Yeah. And I uh, hope to see you for real one day. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see yeah. you. <laughs> Take care of yourself. Yeah. Stay healthy. You, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.